Well, greetings, Titans. Welcome to the big picture. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Solid state, sodium iron, iron ore, graphene, aluminium ore. Well, to look into these technologies, it's far easier to just look at the world's largest battery manufacturer, CATL. And before I get my customary flood of comments accusing me of loving China, this is not any more an endorsement of China as would be buying an iPhone or Nike trainers, which also are made in China. The reason I look at CATL is A, it is the largest battery company in the world with nearly 40% of the total market. That compares to someone like LG, they got a tiny 14%. But B, they sell or license their battery making technology and manufacturing equipment to others. For example, Tesla, for them to make batteries to CATL design around the world. Also, as the largest, it's a reasonable assumption that they also have the largest R&D team, research and development, looking into different technologies. So CATL is a great place to start, but it's not the only one. Well, the headquarter is today based in Ningdi, as Fujian, uh, and was founded in 1999, quite recent, to make batteries for consumer electronics. Branched out to become CATL in 2011, when they made the batteries for the largest wind and solar energy storage project in the world at that time. As EVs began to take off in a big way, they've gone on to form many mergers or associations with the likes of BMW, Tesla, SAIC and Geely. And as commercial vehicles turned to electric, so they became a major player in supplying batteries for buses and lorries. So what's out there is worth looking at? Well, NMC and LFP are now pretty old hat in use in millions of EVs around the world in a few dozen different makes. They've come on a long way over the last 10 years, but the next 10 years are likely to be dynamic. NMC were once ex extensively used, and they've undergone a massive transformation with more energy density and even quicker charging speeds. CATL typical NMC battery now offers 10% to 80% charging in between 5 and 15 minutes, combined with a 1,000 kilometer or 625 mile range from a standard sized battery pack. It also incorporates a unique pack heating system that can raise the temperature by 6 degrees centigrade per minute, meaning that if it's below freezing, you can get it up to toasty warm in under 10 minutes for faster charging. LFP started as relatively low power but cheap batteries, having a longer life expectancy and better able to use all 100% of the capacity. Plus, they didn't use cobalt like the NMC. But until now, they were lower power. Then CATL steadily improved those until today the latest batteries offer ranges comfortably in the 4 to 600 kilometer range, it's 250 to 375, and charge 10 to 80% in less than 30 minutes. But their advances in chemistry have now enabled them to offer an absolutely unique 8 year or 800,000 kilometer warranty. Well surely that is enough now to stop the idiots claiming you need a new battery every 2 or 3 years. Well, they even make it available in a battery swap configuration and they advertise you can swap in under a single minute and it's variable in that if you're going on a long journey you can swap it for a larger capacity battery. But one step further is the Shenzhen and the Shenzhen Plus range of LFP batteries. These offer the ranges of 1000 kilometers, 625 miles as normal and they have 4C super fast charging. 4C simply means that the battery can be charged from 0% to 100% four times within an hour, or 15 minutes, empty to full to empty again, four times in an hour. Now much of the improvement has come from enhanced production techniques. They use things like honeycomb shaped anodes which boost the energy density, and they use one piece casings for the batteries themselves, making them cheaper to make. Well, these and others have taken energy density over 200 watt hours per kilogram. On the road, you can often add 600 kilometer range in just 10 minutes, thanks to AI 
polarization that controls the actual charging current in real time. Well, these have now been installed in Chinese EVs like Xpeng, Zika, and GAC. And Tesla as well is CATL's largest single customer. And they also are installing them in the latest models, such as the Model Y Refresh or Juniper. Tesla does keep the exact details fairly well hidden and have such a wide variety of battery suppliers that they can and do chop and change depending on what is flavour of the month. Tesla also has a license for the equipment, technology and chemistry, and they're already making their own Shenzhen Plus batteries in Nevada to overcome USA and European tariffs that apply to Chinese imports. The Shenzhen Plus is likely to become the mainstay battery for the next few years. And it's also recently just dropped in price by half. This now looks like the future. It's cheap and it's powerful and it's fast. But CATL is not standing still. They are investigating other things. They're looking at solid state, but their chief executive, that's Robin Zeng, uh, has already stated that they are many years away, as currently they are impractical and unsafe. Well, if the largest battery company in the world is not keen at this time, that must say something. But they are researching sodium ion batteries. Sodium has an atomic number of 11, works in a very similar way to lithium, which has an atomic number of three. And that means the sodium ions are physically much bigger and denser than lithium, and that presents problems that until now, uh, no one has resolved. But they do now offer higher energy density, faster charging, excellent thermal stability, and amazing low temperature performance down as low as minus 20 centigrade. Plus the biggest advantage, sodium is really cheap. Well, CATL launched the Qlin battery recently in the Sherry EV, and it went into mass production in March this year. They're out there. Well, this in itself is a game changer, offering a new cell to pack technology with more efficient cooling, increasing the heat transfer by fourfold. This allows for an energy density of up to 255 watt hours per kilogram. This is well ahead of the current NMC and miles ahead of LFP standard batteries. Well, as the Shenzhen Plus batteries are only now appearing in EVs, sodium ion batteries are already several years behind the mainstream. If you look at Legacy Auto, most of them just seem to buy whatever's in plentiful supply and cheap, hence the majority are now heading to LFP. And they're probably at least two generations behind the market leaders like Xpeng, Zika and Tesla. Now, most in the industry believe solid state is a good decade away from widespread use, just like nuclear fusion is always 20 years away. And of course, there is a very real risk that a new Shenzhen battery comes along offering solid state levels of energy density and charging speeds and solid state never become economically viable. There are loads of batteries out there that work and claim great results, but that's an awful long way to reaching mass production with energy density and charging speeds better than the existing offers. A new battery that just offers a longer range is not of any interest to the EV manufacturers if the price is double. 600 mile EVs will soon become the norm, giving a range very similar to that of a petrol car. Is there any need for a 1,000 mile range car? Legacy Auto didn't think so. See, they've had well over 100 years of making cars. Any time at all, they could have put a bigger fuel tank in that could give an ICE car a 1,000 mile range. No, none ever has. There are no petrol or diesel cars that can cover a 1,000 miles on a tank full. In the EV world, charging speed is far more important and the cost is critical. What CAT already has on the way is one of their batteries now comes with a one million mile warranty. Oh, okay, let's be realistic. It's one and a half million kilometers, which is 932,999 miles. But who's arguing? These packs show virtually zero de degradation for the first thousand cycles. Well, compare that to the same thousand cycles of an MNC battery being around the lower end of the life expectancy of the early batteries. 
Well, is anyone out there actually going to drive a million miles ever? I think these warranties from CATL, CATL of eight years or the one and a half million kilometers due out shortly, they're far more for psychological reassurance than any practical purpose. No longer can someone say you need to replace your battery every two years and it will cost you a fortune. If you do need to replace it, it's free. Well, how about aluminium air batteries? Well, these act like uh, much more like hydrogen fuel cell technology than a battery. And these have just hit the magical 500 watt hours per kilogram. And that makes them ideal for use in aircraft. Cost will probably keep them up in the air rather than down on our roads. Odd Chinese EV manufacturers will have a dabble, but they are unlikely to go mainstream because 500 watt hours per kilogram versus NMC around about 205, they're not cheap. But the airlines love them. Typical gallon of jet fuel is about six pound and a jumbo jet burns one gallon per second. No, I'm not gonna work out what that is for your three hour flight to Malaga. But going one further, what happens when these batteries reach that distant one and a half million kilometers? And here there is real interest. CATL has recently bought up a company called Brump that takes over at the end of the battery life. There are still very valuable chemicals to be recovered even after a million kilometers and CATL are leading the way. Nickel, cobalt and manganese are 99.6% recyclable and over 50% of all batteries in China are being recycled. What makes our battery venture in the UK look really pathetic. This is a huge industry just waiting to be tapped. What's holding us back? We've got EVs, grid storage, battery manufacture. They're the future industries. Let's just get on with it. I'm Dave.